One of the rites of passage for a woodworker is building a wooden mallet. It's kind of like making a cutting board or building a birdhouse, but with that added satisfaction of getting to whack an object with another object. So the first step to building this mallet was picking out those perfect pieces of wood. All of this wood is leftover reclaimed oak I got from vintage reclaimed lumber, and that was for the tables that I made a few months ago. To get started, I jointed the face of each board on the side that's going to get the epoxy fill. This piece of wood will become the handle of the mallet. And due to all the little bug holes and a big void on the back side, I had to build up a form out of melamine. This red tape I'm using is called tuck tape. I used it to cover the form so the epoxy won't stick and then assembled the form with screws. I cut the beam down to 13 inches on the miter saw and this is also where I realized how dull my saw blades have become. I mixed enough of this two part epoxy so I could separate it out for the two different colors I'm using here, green and gold. After mixing, it's time for what everybody came to see, those sweet epoxy pours. The epoxy will flow into every unseen void within the wood, so I had to add more epoxy the following day. Same process as before. Mix, separate, tint, mix again, and then pour. So close. The following day, I pulled the board for the handle out of the form. The beam had a few voids on the side I had to address. For this, I used a syringe to push the epoxy down into the crack. This works great for those smaller voids, but it wouldn't be very efficient for the larger fills. To remove the epoxy overpour, I used my jointer and then this heat gun method and a chisel like you've seen me use in the past. This red oak scrap board will become the center of the mallet, but first I had to get it dimensioned.
Before putting the mallet together, there were a few more voids to address, but this time I just used clear epoxy and a syringe. I laid out the approximate location of the tenon on the handle and then drew out the profile of the handle that I wanted. After cutting out the handle on the bandsaw, I used about six different implements to shape the handle. My oscillating belt sander was by far the best tool for the job. It made adding these shoulders and then rounding over the sides of the handle very simple. After shaping the handle, I decided I didn't like the rounded end of the handle, so I chopped half of it off and I think it turned out way better this way. The head of the mallet is about 6 inches long, so I cut down the face of what was once the beam into two 6 inch boards. Also I know it looks like my hands may be close to the blade, but I promise I'm being as safe as I possibly can be here. I cut in a 2 degree angle on the ends of this board that's going in the center of the mallet, and then I cut it in half. This allows the tenon of the handle to expand and lock in when you add the two wedges. Speaking of the tenon, before cutting I marked out its location and then measured to find out how much material I needed to remove. Using the handle as a reference, I glued these two center blocks with the two degree angle in place and then added a couple nails to hold the blocks while the glue dries. I squared up the head of the mallet on the joiner before cutting in a 2 degree angle on each face over on the miter saw and this new sharp blade made all the difference. I also gave the head of the mallet a 3 8 inch round over on all edges. Next I cleaned up the edges before sanding with 220 grit. 600 grit, 1200 grit, and then finally 2000 grit. These ultrafine grits are more to polish the epoxy, but they also burnish the wood and give it an almost glass-like shine. I cut these slots into the tenon to accept the wedges and then drilled relief holes so it doesn't crack when I assemble the mallet. And speaking of assembly, now I could put it all together. Last I added two coats of this Maker Brand Simple Finish and then I could So 
thanks for watching. This video is sponsored by, well, all of you. And what I mean by that is that you all are the ones that make this channel possible. And I just wanna say a big thank you. Just by subscribing and watching my videos, hitting thumbs up, posting comments, that all lets YouTube know that these videos are worth watching and that they should recommend them to others. So I encourage you all to continue doing all of that Sincerely, thanks y'all. I also wanna give a shout out to Total Boat for sending out this epoxy to try and to Vintage Reclaim Lumber for providing the wood that I use for this mallet. Another shout out to my pal Johnny over at JT Woodworks. Check him out, his mallet video is great and I learned a lot from watching it when I was researching this project. I'll link it down below. Also, if you're into super soft, comfy t-shirts and supporting this channel, I've got just the thing for you, merch, over on my website and I'll link that down below as well. Also, don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Johnny Builds for more of the day-to-day -day stuff in the shop. And last, I just wanna say again, thanks for checking this one out and supporting this channel, and I'll see you back here next time. Yeah.